Hello, this is Michael Hexter, and welcome to Politics 2100 here on YouTube. So this episode I'm calling Fed Chair Powell, comma, Class Warrior for the Rentier Classes versus the Working and Capitalist Classes. So this is a commentary on uh, an expose on uh, Jerome Powell's mechanical, he's the current Fed chair of the Federal Reserve Bank um, of the U.S. Uh, he is uh, uh, a um, rigidly, automatically, robotically trying to cut inflation by raising interest rates. And so this is a inefficient and indirect way to reduce inflation. And it is also misdiagnosis where our inflation has come from. Um, and he has publicly also said that he what he's trying to do is essentially reduce the power of workers to um, he, he in late, his latest statement says, no, he's trying to balance supply and demand for labor. So this is still a, uh, a focus on the labor component of inflation uh, without looking at the profit component of, and, and the um, profiteering component of inflation, which is something that m many economists have observed. And, and so there are a number of voices, I'm not alone in calling him out, um, and saying this is wrong and also calling out. Now, Joe Biden, uh, Joe Biden rehired uh, Jerome Powell as Fed chair in one of these um, efforts at bipartisanship and, and uh, essentially embrace of, of um, orthodoxy in Washington and that somehow there's this sort of bipartisan, uh, uh, Powell was, um, was appointed by um, Trump. And so this is part of Biden's sort of embrace of, of Republicans, because uh, Powell is essentially a Republican, um, or at least appointed by a Republican. And, and, and he um, is a fairly conventional chair of the Fed. And, and one would need, I think, in my opinion, Democrats need to break from the Washington consensus and hire a chair of the Fed who uh, pays attention both to full employment or maximal employment and inflation. So the, the dual mandates of the Fed are to um, uh, control prices while also uh, maximize employment. And so he is focused only on inflation and he is trying to repeat uh, mechanically, robotically, the, uh, the, the greatest success of the Fed, supposedly, of the Fed, which was in the early 80s, the late 70s, early 80s, when Paul Volcker um, uh, decided to try to tame the stagflation of the 70s by um, uh, uh, raising interest rates higher than they are today. Um, and, and it, actually spurring a quite a deep recession in 18, 1981 and 82. And so this um, recession, uh, there was, inflation was um, uh, cured in part by the recession, but it, it was a blunt instrument. And it also had a number of, of features to it that were desirable for what I'm calling the rentier classes, uh, or you can call them the combination of the investor class and the creditor class, okay? So these are people who either um, through making bank loans or um, by lending money, uh, or in other words, the creditor class or the um, investor class, the people who have money and they buy a stake in a company and want to see it that they grow or get dividends and 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 from that uh, stake in that company. So passive who want to um, after maybe doing some due diligence or some uh, uh, they basically want to passively receive a stream of income from businesses. 
and from uh, or borrowers, um, and uh, it could be also uh, you know consumer borrowers um, who are borrowing to buy a car and so forth and so on. So that they want to see or a house, you know, uh, mortgages. So so th this um, group of passive income seekers, okay. Um, are some of them are the, some of the richest people in the United States, and uh, and also there are others. There are people, uh, ordinary retirees, and so forth and so on, are part of these rentiers. A rentier can also be a um, simply a retiree. So so, but there is a a money manager class. This is an observation uh, of uh, Hyman Minsky in the 1980s. Um, and that has emerged as being uh, a, a new class um, that uh, has helped spur the financialization of the economy. And so this rentier class is sort of a, 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 I'm using that word as the umbrella for money managers, banks, and investors, okay? But all of these groups have been instrumental in, in creating a, a form of capitalism, some might call it hyper-capitalism or um, uh, a financialized, financialized capitalism. Uh, you could say it's, it's a form of Ponzi, there's a Ponzi circuit certainly of um, created in, in, for instance, in stock buybacks and, and the pumping up of asset prices by artificial means to um, to create um, uh, uh, basically more returns for these this rentier class or these rentier classes um, and to keep that um, going. So anyway, so Powell is misdiagnosing what's causing inflation. So he's not controlling inflation in the most efficient way. He needs he would need to step aside and say you. Um, uh, executive branch and the Congress need to do other things to control inflation. I can't, uh, if he were a, a more, uh, in my opinion, moral and competent individual as well, both moral and competent, he would say, I raising interest rates more is not helping. Uh, it's help, hurting more than it's helping. And it's also hurting, as I'm saying, the working classes the working class and also the capitalist class. So that in that I'm being somewhat, um, I'm, I'm stating the, in the obvious in, in a sense, because he cutting the ability for businesses to, in other words, when businesses lay people off, they, it's, the, it's a feature of them giving up on seeking some set of profits. So profits are what businesses actually achieve when they, uh, sell products, uh, you know, uh, with a certain margin, and they they achieve a profit, and or sell a service and, and achieve a profit, and um, the difference between the cost and what they sell it for, and so that is a a different thing than a rent, okay, an economic rent, which is what uh, a creditor or a uh, a money lender, a a, a, a bank will uh, get in terms of interest or in terms of uh, a dividend so forth and so on that is a passive form of income so powell is attacking the working class by also attacking the capitalist class or the capitalist function of a combined set of owner ownership classes okay and so um that 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 are, the ownership class being these rentier classes plus the capitalist class the people who are actively managing businesses in the broad sense of the word and and they're man they're they are in control of the business they control the business and they 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 oversee the operations of the business and this the investor class is standing behind them or the 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 rentiers are standing behind them and they're saying you just just give me the money okay i'm just interested in making more money and so there are uh, more or less ethical reasons or, or the ethics of the investor class or the rentier class can be more strong, more or less strong. They can be aligned with the um, 
the uh, goals, the mission of that business more or less. So they might just say, you know, we do want money. That's part of our, why we're investing in your business, but we also want you to achieve your mission. So, and that's where, um, but that's not typical in our economy. The typical investor is wanting to just clear more invest and, and the whole edifice of Wall Street and, and financialization, the financialized economy, financial financialized economy is that that um, they they are simply interested in the um, putting money in and getting more money out okay and um, while this is also a capitalist the, the manager of a business also has to keep this in mind they have to that's part of their job their job is also to manage the real business and so they are both aligned with uh, the working class in the sense of that their fortunes as capitalists, um, uh, in other words, the manager of a real business that, that, that um, throws off profit are aligned to the degree that they want to, they want to expand their business. They want to have, so, so they, to a certain degree, maybe they don't want to expand beyond a certain point, but they don't want to certainly contract. And that is, um, uh, or at least contract based on the say so of the central bank and or or the banks that then offer them loans based on what the central bank uh, uh, declares as the interest rate or, or names the interest rate that that um, uh, they 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 don't want to have their business uh, um, controlled that way by the 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 variations in the the ideas of the central banker. Or, cent or the banking central bank in general that they um, uh, that they should should um, basically uh, curtail their operations and also which means a, a lessening in their own profit and their what they achieve in that area of their business. So anyway, um, this process then of Jerome Powell. Um, uh, raising interest rates is, I th and I think, malpractice from the point of view of a central banker. It can be easily shown that it's malpractice. We need a movement really to remove him, okay, from being the central banker for a whole host of reasons. Um, and, and also Joe Biden has allowed him to do this. And again, out of this fealty to this bipartisan um, ideal, and it is, I am worried, in other words, without an outcry from the left and from from people like Bernie Sanders and others, um, uh, that that Joe Biden should, you know, put his big boy pants on and and say to Jerome Powell, no, don't crush the economy, um, and don't don't hurt the working class. I mean, I would like him to say, in my highest and best view of a president uh uh of whoever that is don't do it because it's hurting the working class it's hurting also businesses in their true and best operation to provide employment to create valuable goods and services so forth and so on and in this i'm also deviating or you know showing my cards in a way about what i think this segmentation of classes that we've been operating with in the post-Marxist or the post-Marx left needs some revision when it comes to the varying uh, roles of the of the capitalist. So the capitalist has had now Marx uh, sort of thought of he had the idea that the the bourgeoisie was progressive at some points and then regressive at other points. And so I'm not I don't want to get into a very detailed argument about all the details of Marx's um, framework, but overall, the political outcome of using Marx's framework has been that capitalists and their roles have been uh, made to be the 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 impediments to socialism, and they have politically often been the impediments to socialism. I'm not saying the capitalists are are part of the socialist project. Um, but that uh, that still there are vital roles that are played by capitalists that would even be 
need to be part of a worker cooperative um, uh, own, in other words, worker, totally worker owned um, business universe or, or, or enterprise universe. That there are functions, and that this is some, discovered again and again when efforts have been made toward worker ownership, which is not a bad idea at all, but it just means taking on the and understanding what the roles have been of capitalists to, in actually managing the real assets of a business, the real assets which would be taken over by workers if they so wished, or if government that were come the revolution. They, they would need to to be taking over those real assets and particularly and the nature and understand the nature of those real assets and also the the nature of innovating around those real assets some of which are functions of that the capitalist has been involved in the entrepreneurship is also something that is a function not just management but entrepreneurship but dreaming the 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 imagination function of an entrepreneur or a capitalist uh, in the founding of a company or the spinning off of another company, those are those are functions that would need to still exist in a society if you decide not to either greatly constrain capitalists in a strong regulatory environment, in a sort of uh, a left social democratic deregist regime, or, you know, in one where all workers' councils own every business. So, and that, um, uh, so that, that function of, of imagining what the business is like, and also there's a num number of other functions involved in that. But anyway, whatever those things are, Jerome Powell is again it, okay, <laughs> against it. So he is, um, uh, 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 he doesn't understand it, or he, he can make platitudes and say that he does understand it and he says he's really for that. He just thinks it's out of bounds and so forth and so on. But he is trying to crush what we have in our current economy. Now, I'm not saying our current economy is great in the sense of from the point of view of sustainability. I am for building a circular economy, okay, that uh, is not the once through economy that we currently have. But, um, but the Jerome Powell is not f for that either. And what he's doing is 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 about um, strengthening the position of the most conservative and and parasitic uh, funk parts of the wealthy classes of the of the ruling classes. So I will say, you know, this this rentier class is uh, some of the central uh, players in the whole. Uh, let's say ruling elite that we have in our society and they are very very powerful they they are the donor class okay they are literally along with some of the capitalists who have money but they can but they don't have the 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 strict capitalists that i'm saying are, are a small fraction of the money that that uh the the investor class slash you know rentier or or creditor class has a lot more money or corporate class you could say you know there's there's both wealthy individuals and then corporations you know there's some combination thereof so th these are not all um you know sole proprietorships in the sense of each um pot of money is only attached to a, an individual's name and so forth and so on uh in this rentier class there are corporations too in that that are that own a lot of this money or control a lot of this money and that use it to in the in the, their roles the donor class to buy in the united states in particular lots of politicians and also indirectly in european um uh economies as well your Euro european societies as well so anyway so this um this this sort of multifarious uh, ruling elite, you know, cap using the word capitalist um, for them is uh, is an old fashioned word for them. They are they are they've they've their their billionaire class is maybe is close to who they are. OK, um, corporate and billionaire classes. They are people who are um, 
uh, who use the in the financialized economy are interested in just making more getting more power out of their money that they have controlling controlling the economy so they they can make more money and they're uninterested in exactly how that happens at all they don't care they just want to make more money and this has been the case this is not new news this has been these this this class has been um uh you know showing its its power and using its power for uh, at least the last 40 years or so and um and not they they were not absent before that either but they have been become differentiated and they they act and they're also you know various entities within the wall street um ecosystem the private equity com uh, firms and so forth and so on that have uh, have spun out um uh are are one expression of what i'm describing anyway so we need a movement of both work, working class people and also people who earnestly believe in a real economy, in a real, in building a real economy, in creating a real economy through public means and through private means com combined to resist, uh, to, to, to resist this effort to, to crush the economy uh, using high interest rates and, uh, and to speak up for um both meaningful work and and also for you know uh work pay work at paid at a decent wage at a at a living wage and also f for um a an economy that is working toward this a circular economy that is that is in the process of 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 and this is under obviously this esg is something that is being is a is a small weak effort in this in the uh, you know it's a, it's a whispering of what really needs to happen to create this circular economy it's a it's a small fig leaf uh, but nevertheless that it exists within this you know uh polymorphous um ruling elite financial elite rentier class um is okay it's it's better than nothing in that area but it's not good enough so anyway so i just wanted to um try to uh contextualize what's going on with jerome powell and and hopeful that people um uh can can resonate with this idea it's there are lots of causes to take up but this is one that um is very important for basically most of labor m most labor unions should be on this in terms of uh, uh uh you know fighting for fighting against powell and uh and it would it's kind of troubling to me that uh there's not a, a movement to remove him and um uh, let's hope that we can create one anyway so i hope um uh, you found this um, uh, episode interesting, and, and please share your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video if you found it interesting, and also please uh, follow, um, please subscribe to Politics 2100 um, uh, so you get notification of new videos, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.